Welcome to a new video. This time we're going to look at um, Markdown to Real Pages transformation. So this here is uh, just a simple in, uh, website. And um, cool thing here is uh, I have this breadcrumb and I have like this interactive thing here where I can say what's a, basically a little quiz. And the cool thing about this, it's fed from a Markdown file. So here it's just Markdown syntax, but I can pass here the breadcrumb data uh, for the breadcrumb component. And I also can use like um, call my custom components from Svelte in here. And um, it's not that difficult to set up. And um, thing is why I want to do it is like, I like to use Markdown for everything um, to define my stuff. And um, I don't like to write lots of text in plain HTML or something like that. So if you think this is useful, you can use that too. It's simple to set up. Have fun with the video. So to start off, we need to install a dependency. It's called MD Swags. So we're gonna install it. You can of course use NPM if you want. And um, this one is basically um, taking any markdown file and it can turn it into HTML for Svelte. Okay, so to make it work, we need to actually first create a config file and we call that mdswex.config.js. And in there, what we're gonna do is we um, import a define config function, path, file to path, we do a little ha hack to get our dir name. Um, and then we can create a config object. Um, we're gonna define some extensions. Um, so this is basically it scans for markdown files and .svx files. You can decide for yourself which one of these you want to use. And um, also create a layout object. We then export that config and um, yeah okay so next thing is we going to need to go to our svelte config so here we import uh, md swex and uh, our config here and then um, extensions we need to add so uh, if you haven't in this year can ex uh, export extensions. So default is Svelte or Svelte files or components and the ones we defined the other config. So markdown files basically. And then we also need to um, turn this preprocess thing into an array because we need another one. And this is the MD Svex with the MD Svex config. Okay, great. Now we're ready to go. Yeah. Um, okay, so next thing we want to do is we um, want to create um, a route. So like uh, for example, we want to have an about section with a lot of information about the app. And here we want to don't want to write Svelte components, we want to write markdown. So what we can do in here is we just create an, instead of an, a plus page dot Svelte, we Play, create plus page dot svx or md if you you can do what you want and um, then we can start writing some markdown anything so here's some generated text for our music app and um, yeah so now we want to turn it into a page so if we could go to our about now, now a page can't be reached uh, because I also don't run the server. This should actually return in 404. So uh, it does already work. No, it does already work. Okay. But it looks kind of, um, yeah, boring, I would say. Also, yeah, the, the, the header here in my browser just says a URL. And here, um, this isn't an 
really styled anything. It's still an H1, but uh, styling is awful. But because my CSS framework overrides every default styling. Um, so what we can do to make this better is um, kind of create a layout that uh, um, that basically we have a wrapper around the markdown page and can configure stuff. Mm. To do that, we're gonna create in our lib components. We can create a new folder called uh, layouts and in there um, we create another file let's call it default minus layout dot svelte so this is now a svelte component and um, simple thing to do is um, this one um, just add a main tag around it, an h1 with the title, and uh, also a head, a swell head, so we change the page title. And basically we export a title in here, change me. And um, yeah, so we now want to do, use this template, this layout. First we need to configure it, so we have this layout thingy here. And we can um, then reference it by first giving the name, default I call it, and path.join dear name, and then the path to the component file. And again, this has a exported element of title, so we can go into our thingy here. And Markdown has a thing called um, front matter. That's basically a header section of the file. We started at it with th three dashes. And um, here we can then pass the attributes. So, uh, uh, hello world, for example. And um, we can also then reference our layout that we uh, defined in the object. So it's def referenced with the same name put in here. And if we go back, um, Okay, this doesn't, uh, still visually doesn't look different. Let's change a little bit. Let's say here, uh, class has size one. Is this a, is size one? Um, one second. Uh, what's it called? is size ah uh, one is the color uh, i need to do a big, bigger one but that, that's not working good doesn't use the layout i think maybe i need to restart the server the ah okay i uh, couldn't be found uh default layout result is the name wrong? Ah, uh, uh, is it? Ah, uh, uh, I miss messed up the ordering. It should be next to, um, not inside the tensic thingy. Okay. Yeah, now this works. So we have our hello world here. The title is also hello world, and the stylings are applied. So yeah, this is basically it for referencing basic layouts. So um, this looks a little bit ugly. I found um, from Sindro Soros, is a famous open sorcerer. Um, he has a CSS for GitHub Markdown um, because this looks a little bit yeah, boring and yeah, badly formatted for now. So I'm going to copy a new um, layout so i've called one fancy layout it has the class marked on body this is a css file from central source and um, also applied some max with margin and padding and we can then go ahead 
create advanced thing in here again plus page dot s v x and in there I'm going to use some some more advanced uh, markdown tables headings bold etc and of course we, we created this new fancy layout we need to define it in here and oops reference it again with the name fancy and if we go to slash advanced we get this cool thing uh, it's not what I am expecting yeah now it worked needed a small restart I think to the server needed to detect some files or something but yeah this looks now much better and more readable I guess with the margin left and right yeah that's great and um, another cool thing is components so you might want to have more more things into this to make it a real cool web app mm. the first one is maybe a component inside the layout so um, I'm gonna create a file called components layout dot svelte first copy the fancy layout and um, I create a new sub components now inside layouts components and um, I copy over something and the first one is a breadcrumb thingy so we can navigate between the pages and um, yeah, we pass basically uh, some breadcrumb items with uh, types as label and href so we can navigate from the children to the child or something so let's do that um, we have this component we can then import it into this file so um, import the thing here and we also export a new mm, breadcrumb uh, thing here so one thing you need to actually be aware of is um, you are so I said it's language TS but actually it's not working when you put any type in for here so if I for example say this is any array and we start the server and actually navigate to something that uses this so the folder level 3 and I create a file in here uh, that's not the right one so I have basically this and new layout again its components and here is also a components layout and I go to level 3 hello if I restart now yeah, you can see here we get this parsing area error and um, yeah, so it can't actually pass TypeScript in here, so we are not able to use it. But we will get um, these nasty errors in here. So what we need to do actually is disable checking type checking from here and just use plain JavaScript. And yeah, unfortunately. 
And we can then call our breadcrumb component here, pass the path chain. And um, in the file here, I didn't know if I showed it, but here is an array basically with the props of the component. And it just goes back to the advanced demo and this one. And if I restart the server, reload the page, you can see here we have this beautiful breadcrumb so we can go down the layers. Okay, great. So this is how you can uh, call components from your layout. Another interesting thing you might want to do is you want to um, maybe um, call a component from your content here. So for example, I have just again some example markup, but here I want to show a quiz question component. That's basically as a question and answer options. And um, yeah, this is basically this component. And uh, yeah, yes, and yeah, basically what I told you now. And um, we can, we want to call it from Markdown. So not statically inside uh, a layout because we don't want to create a layout for like every content just for this single markdown file, we want that. So how are we gonna do that? Uh, it's really simple. So this unfortunately does now work because quiz question is not defined. And the thing we can do here is inside the markdown file below the front matter, we can create a script context, a uh, script tag with a context module, import the component, and export it. And now it will be defined and we get the question. It's of course Berlin. Uh, did was Berlin right? No, it wasn't. I don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah, but it, you can see it works. Um, it's of course Paris. And uh, yeah. I think this is kind of weird putting this into uh, the markdown file. I wish there would be an option to put it into any layout file, like here to import the components and export them. This unfortunately does not work for any custom components or like not components that are used or are real HTML components like H1 images. So, um, Another thing you can do is, um, if I go to MDSFX documentation, you can actually overwrite in the layout um, yeah, the default components. For example, you want to have your own image component. I use that a lot in my blog, for example, where I have a Gatsby image that makes sure um, image is provided in different formats uh, w w the one that the brother supports and different heights and uh, sizes based on the device size. And you can import your own H1, P, -E -P L, I, or image or something components and export them. And this you can do actually in the template file, like in here, import it here and export it like we did in the markdown file. So you can overwrite um, the default H1 tags, for example. Yeah, but this does only work again for the HTML in included tags, not your custom components from Svelte. And yeah, I think uh, this is it. So this is how you can do cool and easy markdown to your page transformations. Thanks for tuning in. If you have any feedback, comment below and enjoy your day.